couple of years ago when I was in Chicago, I was doing a play and I got sent the script by my agent. Quincy is a terrific writer and I knew very well and had read two or three times because a friend of mine has been trying to make a film of his book Waiting for the Barbarian. So he was a writer I, I knew and I think he's a really fine writer and it told a sort of quite grim but interesting story but I, I don't, you, you can't necessarily choose things by whether people will like you or not because that sort of depends on which people were. None. As far as the director, I've worked with um, so many first time directors, so many unknown directors, so many uh, known directors. So I don't mind much about that. He cast people, every single one I thought was terrific. Uh, everyone he cast, uh, the people he crewed it with. I loved it. It's a beautiful country. Uh, you can only sort of have... Uh, all you can do is have hope for it, hope that it... continues to sort of, uh, what would you say, not grow up. That they, they come from a difficult history, as do most countries, you know, but there is a sort of perhaps more recent in the changes that is somewhat more recent, but I loved it there. Uh, Cape Town is very beautiful, and Citrus Doll, where we shot on the Western Cape. Uh, I liked very much. We, we weren't, we stayed in the town there, but we shot sort of up by a mountain pass, which was very nice. The Australian crew has been great, terrific, uh, very capable, very good, a lot of fun. Uh, I've won a lot of money on bets, and that's always, you know. They, they might be slightly compulsive about gambling. Well, first off, um, Anna Reno Monticelli, the uh, producer, uh, writer um, of the film, uh, read the book. Uh, she said to me, this would make a fantastic movie. I read the book and uh, it was a wonderful novel. Um, we both agreed it would be a very tough film to make, but um, at that point we thought, you know, this is such a challenge, it's a, and it's such wonderful material, we should go for it. So uh, um, Anna then pursued the option, and uh, we went through the years of uh, uh, trying to finance the film, and eventually we were successful, and um, we've got a movie now. It's very difficult to sort of put it into a statement of what something is concretely about. It's about many things. I think that um, uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, the elements that that I've tried to put into the uh, into the film that is in the book is is is, is the fact that when you're in a country or a region which has been traumatized for many many years uh, with a history of violence. Um, that there is a cycle of violence and revenge that is very difficult to break and one of the characters in the film uh, tries to break that um, cycle and, uh, and causes all sorts of ramifications as well but that's just one of the strands of a very complex um, confronting uh, piece. I think for a long time about how the film will move to the screen. Uh, I try and have a unity about 
the entire project, including the cast, the, the design, the, uh, the soundscape, the music scape of, of the project. So um, I see, I, I, I try and get a feel of how that's all going to come together. Um, for instance, uh, uh, before anyone was employed on the, on the picture, before I think it was fully financed, I went to South Africa and looked for locations for the farm. Uh, I found a, a terrific location with the help of a, a scout there and uh, we built the farmhouse um, in such a fashion that we could utilize the storytelling um, through images uh, in a way that would have been more difficult in, in, a, in a less spectacular, less dramatic um, uh, uh, position. And we built the farmhouse accordingly so that doors, windows, rooms um, looked onto um, certain aspects of the of the landscape, and the landscape is incredibly important to the to the film, uh, to the African story, if you like. Um, also, uh, some of the music was already uh, decided on before we started shooting. Um, David Lurie writes an opera during the uh, during the book. Um, I wanted to actually have a piece that had uh, uh, a classical operatic uh, feel to it, which John Malkovich um, could play. And that was woven into the narrative so that one hears a theme through the film, which comes to, if you like, a final fruition at the very end when it's completed. The visual style is, is quite objective. Uh, I've kept the camera back so that you see people in the landscape. Um, you, uh, you can make judgments um, on their behavior and what they do. Instead of actually being uh, quite a proactive style which with lots of close-ups and, uh, and, and intercutting, I l like to let things play out a bit so that the audience can make their own decisions their own judgments of what's happening, which the book does. So um, I want people to uh, get the information and then to make their minds up instead of me uh, manipulating it in, in such a way that there's only one way of interpreting a scene. I think the film will create controversy. Uh, some people will perhaps have problems with it, other people will uh, be more in tune with it. But um, our whole purpose was to be faithful to the intent of the novel. And uh, controversy is in the novel and I think it's in the movie as well. I hope that the audience will um, debate what's in the film and in a way take that with them when they leave the cinema. If one can portray what happens realistically, if the performances are true and sincere, then, then you, get, uh, you get a believability. And I think what was essential for us was to make sure this scenario, uh, this action, uh, these people were believable and could happen. And if that happens, then I think the audience will be moved by them. What I like to do is to discuss what we're doing um, and the characters in, in a sort of relaxed fashion so that um, there is some sort of comfort between people that should have relationships or backstories or whatever. It's not in the script but it should, there should be some acknowledgement that this is not the first time they've met each other. Um, and I feel that uh, uh, when we get to the set we know what we're doing and we don't have to rehearse there is that time then to be spontaneous. I don't believe in, in going over scenes and, 
and uh, performing them in rehearsal, I believe in this, because people are cast because of, I know, I th know they can do it. Well, there were quite a few inexperienced actors um, uh, in the film, uh, and they can be surprisingly good, riveting, in fact, because they don't bring along any of the baggage of professionalism. Um, the difficulty sometimes is that they can't repeat things of the same type of regularity that people that have a lot of experience and technique um, can do. So um, uh, I mentioned to John, John Malkovich that um, we all have to create an environment where we can somehow be aware that some people may be better on the first take and others much later on. And that if we're aware of that, we can, you know, we can create an atmosphere that will uh, allow people to, to fulfill the potential that, you know, uh, that, the, that each of the characters have. I auditioned about two years ago. Uh, it was a whole process. Um, I went to the casting director, Muni Lee, and I read with her about twice. And then eventually I got to the director, Steve Jacobs and Anna, and they saw me about four times, bringing me back and back and back, and it was probably one of the toughest auditions I've ever been to. Um, and then about a year and a half later, I heard that I got the part, and here I am. Lucy Lurie is my character, and she's extremely complex, um, and her whole struggle is internal, and it's about conflict within her own head and her own heart, and I think that's one thing I really want to get across, is that it's not about a country's struggle, it's about her own struggle. She's... Um, She's a wonderful person. I think a, a lot of she's, uh, her friends love her. She's easy. She's a farm girl. She's um, practical, down to earth. She does her own farming, makes her own jams. She's quiet. She lives on her own um, in the middle of nowhere. Her father comes. And I think it, she finds it a bit invasive. She loves her father, but she's very private, loves her own space. Um, and she's very in her world, which David has completely no idea how to fit in. And um, obviously she's attacked, and then she goes through this... It's like her perfect world has kind of um, been tarnished. So she goes through this whole sort of metamorphosis, and she... She takes on a lot of responsibility and she starts to change. And it's not that she becomes mean or horrible, which is so incredible. That's what's so interesting about her is the decisions she makes. Um, and there's a scene where Petra says, Lucy is forward thinking. And that's one thing I've had to struggle with is she, she makes choices that are just so radical. I purposefully, before I came on set, didn't watch any of his work. Because in the story, my character's a lot stronger than him. And I was worried that he would be the strong one. But he was so amazing in the sense that he was so gentle and soft. I don't want it to be a social statement. Um, I want it to be... Um, about people, about the mind, about hurdles that you get through and how you overcome them and everyone's different and that's what's interesting. The back of my mind, I've always wanted to make a film in Africa. That, partly because I was born in Africa, I was born in North Africa and um, um, I was always sort of not just looking for stories but reading a lot of um, African writers and um, when I read Disgrace it was a very organic thing, it was an immediate thing and it was quite a 
I suppose, you know, you read such a great book and you think, I want to make a film out of this, you know, it's a bit sort of arrogant in a way, but it, it, it was what I thought. I thought, this is beautiful, I totally understand this and I really want to make a film out of it. So I just, you know, one step after another and five years later, here we are. Um, but it was, you know, at the time, I, I, although I had read most of his books, when it came, when Disgrace came out, I automatically went and bought it to sort of read that one as well. And I was blown away, just um, how extraordinary it was. He obviously had to approve the script, so I had to show him the script and there was discussion. But um, I was fortunate that the, the things that maybe, you know, he didn't quite, we were able to sort of resolve. Um, then on the other hand, he was very generous. He allowed me to end the film differently from the book. And he understood why I wanted to do it. Uh, so he was very, very generous like that. I don't believe in taking a great piece of work and bastardizing it and putting my own thoughts into it. Um, I did not do that and I did not want to do that. Um, and the book is, is, is extraordinary, you know, it, it, it's very brave, it's, it's, it's very real and I hope that the film has those elements. Because both Steve, the director, and myself uh, come from the acting uh, background, uh, this is one area where we're very, um, not particular, I would say, but we quite, we get quite immersed in, and it's a very important area, because we both realize that if you cast the film right, basically there's very little that you have to do to your actors, because they suit the role, and uh, you know the good actors and sort of the um, you know this organic process happens I mean um, it's very interesting for us choosing the right elements of the film is what makes the end product so much more better than sort of saying okay let's just get so-and-so because he's so-and-so and he's a great actor what we believe is you can be a great actor but not every role suits you and with this film what was important for us was to get people that suited the role and were believable in the role. Finding finance for this film was um, not easy for many reasons um, even though I had a wonderful project. Uh, it, it, nowadays I think it's becoming more and more difficult getting anything up let alone something of this sort of subject matter. It's, it's an art house film. Um, but I was very lucky that the FFC, the Australian Film Finance Corporation, um, were adventurous enough to uh, invest in a film that, in a way, it's like a, a sort of co production. You know, you're, you're, you, the elements are Australian, the, the main crew, the sort of certain actors, but then you're going abroad and, you know, you're shooting the film somewhere else. What I wanted in the film, more than anything, was that even though there is a brutality, a truth in the story that is very much South African, but in a funny way you could apply it in other countries, um, there is a, there's an element of hope through Lucy, in the sense that she believes that you can, that one day things will get better. I mean, they're not going to happen overnight. The way we work is I write the script and I hand it over to him and he then puts his vision into it. Um, and it's a very good way of working too because I find that I trust him and we, we're making the same film. There's never a, a, a moment where I think, what's he doing with my script? I mean, we worked together on our first film and it, you know, I'm always just so amazed how, how he enriches it. 
We always knew we were going to make the film in Africa. It was a very ambitious <laughs> idea because in Australia, uh, the budget we made this film with, you, you know, you go to the next suburb and sort of make a film there. You don't take people and go to another country and make a film. Uh, so it was, um, it was kind of like a very romantic, big vision. We didn't really think about the the actual dollars so much. We thought we have to do this. There's no way we can take this, you know, story and do it in Australia or anywhere else. So there was no question we had to come to South Africa. And once we were here, we wanted landscape that made um, the audience believe this. Uh, this girl wants to live here forever and she doesn't want to leave it because it's so beautiful and and uh, Steve was driving along sort of looking for locations and he just happened to go through this road and he saw this valley and he went stop this is where I want to build a house and this is where I want to make the film so that's what happened <laughs> 